Uh, my name is Wendy Mitchell. I'm the editor of Screen International. I'm delighted to be back here at the 3D Creative Summit. And it's great to see so many people here. And I think this is going to be one of the best talks <laughs> of the whole summit. No pressure. No pressure. Uh, so I'm here with Josephine Derobe, who is a, a real 3D expert, as you're going to hear. Um, first of all, we have to just congratulate her for working on PINA, which I think showed completely new possibilities for 3D in the independent space and was just a, a masterpiece. And she's again working with Vim Vendors, who directed Pina, on a new project called Cathedrals of Culture, which she's going to talk about. And also working on his next film that's a, a drama that's going to be in 3D as well. Uh, you, sh you might also be interested to know that with her father, Alain <coughs> de Robe, am I saying this correctly? I hope. Uh, she also developed the natural depth method for use in 3D. So she'll probably touch on that a little bit as well. And I'll make sure that we have some time at the end for questions. But she's going to take us through a, a presentation a bit about this very special project. It, it's, I guess, conceived or at least spearheaded by Vim Vendors. Or he was the executive producer and he directed one of the segments. But it, you, as you can see, it's also got people like Robert Redford working in 3D. And I think it's especially interesting because it's very much, well, it's very much not people throwing arrows and things. These are buildings. It's a project about architecture and the way we interact with it. But I think it explores new ways of seeing space and depth. And we'll let Josephine start. Enough from me. Hello. Uh, so uh, the PowerPoint is not necessary anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wendy told nearly everything. Um, thank you for your patience. Um, I really wanted to show uh, you a few extracts of this uh, Cathedral of Culture series. So it's possible. Uh, I will uh, show you four extracts uh, pretty soon. Um, Cathedral of Culture, the premiere was in uh, Berlin Festival in 3D. All the series. The series is um, about sounds of building. Um, for TV and cinema. Every episode is 26 minutes. Um, the concept is uh, with six different uh, directors uh, choosing uh, each one a building and uh, with a voiceover telling uh, the building point of view. So can we, can we start with the two first extract, please? Beautiful. <laughs> and I know you're, you're going to touch on this, but maybe you can tell us a little bit about the logistics of going to shoot in these huge buildings and how you prepared for that. Yeah. Um, I thought the episode was the only one uh, out of Europe. Um, we, mm, we try, uh, uh, because we all learn at the beginning with uh, Alain, Alain de Hub, um, who did the um, uh, direction of stereoscopy for Pinot. And uh, we were uh, doing a workshop a year before um, Cathedral of Culture to leave all the creative part, the good moment, the good timing for every director, DOP, to get in, uh, to understand uh, what they can get uh, in a creative way with the 3D and not discovering it uh, on set, because most of the time it's too late, just to understand that they can play with another language. So uh, now your Rune Movies, uh, Wim Wenders company, was uh, really helpful and, and pushing also um, uh, for this um, for me, the crucial step, have a mind open, have time to digest all that 3D stuff and, and propose something creatively. And uh, concerning the gear, uh, we choose uh, German um, rigs who could fit for every project <coughs> because it was quite different for every project. Uh, all of them have five days shooting, 26 minutes, 3D, five days shooting. So it was pretty tight and rock and roll, uh, like this morning. Um, and, and have also material, a uh, screen plane rig, uh, who could fit for this uh, project and be able to switch really fast from, from a dolly to a steadicam or a crane and um, try to jump from one shooting to another one, try to, to couple uh, uh, episodes um, to win that time, also money for uh, the production. Um, so um, 
we did like that for most of the episodes. Uh, we use uh, for uh, Robert Hepp for the episode of Reality Week, uh, and the rest in Europe was with Screen Plane. Uh, for me, the most important things was to uh, follow all the director from the workshop or other director who was not able to do the workshop to prepare everything in advance. The direction of stereoscopy is not a title, it's only the way to um, take care of the 3D and following the narrative and the artistic intention of a director from the beginning <laughs> until the end. And specifically for uh, this uh, beautiful uh, series find something harmonious with the with the three the six different episodes so here is all the director uh, Robert Redford Michael Madsen uh, Wim Wenders um, Michael Glavoger uh, Karim Enouz and Margaret Olin uh, you're gonna see the two other extracts from uh, both episodes we can do it now please So as you can see, every it's I'm sorry, it's only extract and not uh, the six of them. Um, as you can see, it, it is um, really interesting because uh, all of them are really different. All director uh, have uh, um, choose his own style to tell something in 3D uh, differently, even if the thematic uh, is the same. So if building could talk with mainly a voiceover for everybody. Um, there is no repetition. Uh, every director uh, find a way to talk about a building souls um, on his own style. So it was uh, wonderful to work on this project for that. And obviously each of the six is approaching it slightly differently. So how do you ensure that it's not too jarring for the audience, that either the level of depth of the 3D or keeping it cohesive as a project while letting them have their own voice? How did how was that managed? Uh, for, for the 3D, for you the mean? 3D, yeah. um, it was. Uh, yeah, I will go quickly there. Uh, the the thing is, um, the 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 production, the the, the ex executive producer was Nairo Run Movies, so Vin Vendor's company, um, who already work uh, on on Pina, of course, together. And after, uh, <laughs> if building could talk, uh, an artist insta um, artistic installation. Uh, who give birth uh, to Cathedral of Culture, and uh, we already know that it, it, it was really important to prepare in advance, uh, uh, leave the possibility for all the artists uh, to to um, to get in and find something interesting to do in 3D, and also. Um, manage the 3D, so uh, the function of direc director of stereoscopy is that. So um, preparing all the pre-production and uh, test and workshop um, during the process, uh, also um, following all the steps and at the end, uh, all the post-production process was in uh, Berlin, in Germany, in Ari. Um, with a final uh, color uh, grading and a 3D grading uh, I did for each episode. It was the way to have a 3D harmony uh, for uh, all, the, um, all the series. And I think it's, it's, it's um, yeah, I'm proud of this result, really. I, I really like uh, Cathedral of Culture. I mean, it seems like such a challenge to go on these big locations and shoot a lot of architecture in 3D, what were, were there, was that a big challenge to overcome that nobody's really done 3D around all these amazing buildings before and yeah. to have only five days at each one? How did you plan? Uh, um, yeah. uh, of course, uh, we needed to prepare a lot of things in advance uh, just to be prepared to leave also everything happen. Uh, inside sometimes uh, have good surprise and be prepared to run from one location to another one and and it was already really really tight to to, to shoot five days for uh, each episode so the more we can prepare in advance um, and how when I say prepare it's of course the material but we we are uh, used to do that but uh, uh, prepare our, all the TOP and, and director uh, to understand um, this magical and physical uh, physical link the 3D can give us uh, as an audience and uh, how they can 
uh, play with that, how they can manage that to, to say something about an emotional landscape, about uh, the texture of a building, uh, details, or all the spirit of the history of a building. Um, so it was really important to, to prepare that mm -hmm. in advance. And of course, it was sometimes uh, um, um, we were following the schedules and sometimes the surprise, the weather, mm -hmm. uh, a dancer we need to follow. And so, um, of course, we were uh, already um, uh, advising uh, all of them uh, to have a material we can go through quickly. Mm -hmm. So mainly Steadicam for uh, all the projects, mm -hmm. not all, but uh, mainly Steadicam, and, and just be ready to... Mm -hmm. And were there sort of lessons you learned about, especially in shooting interiors, maybe interiors and exteriors, that were there steps along the way that you learned technically how to do it better than you thought? Or um, No, I think uh, in every project we learn, uh, of course, and we push also the limit of the stereographer. Uh, it's not, uh, it's pushing the limit for for director and the OP who never worked. Uh, in 3D before, mm. but it's also the same way. And for example, it was really interesting with Robert Hadford episode to play a lot with a blended package, a blended multi-layer, uh, playing with 2D archive. Mm. What we're going to do with 2D archive yeah, inside? So uh, you can play and, uh, and, and again, play with multi-layer in 3D, mm. 2D archive inside that, mm. uh, depending, of, um, depending of the creative idea of, of the director. And yeah, um, uh, after uh, all the, um, the, um, the budget, the global budget for the series, um, Nauru and Movies said to me it, it was 2.7 million euro for all. Uh, the, I don't know exactly for each episode because there is co-production every time and uh, of course it was tight and with a limited budget on, on set for the shooting so not so easy to have a, a lot of light mm. as you can have on studio you need to you need to 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 deal with that mm. uh, so yeah it, it, I learned a lot uh, mainly uh, with uh, different uh, creative vision mm. in fact I know Robert Redford at the beginning said he wasn't a huge fan of 3D all the time, and you know, do, do you think he enjoyed the process? And yeah, I, I mean, his looked at very, very 3D to me the way he was moving mm. in the building. I thought yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. I really believe that. Um, I think it's um, we, we're gonna have a short interview of him. Uh, mm. He did uh, last year for Push Your Art uh, artistic event in Palais Tokyo. I think it's huge when you are used to manage something um, um, creatively. So you are from a 2D world mm. and suddenly you have a, another tool, but you need to just have uh, the idea that you can catch it and, and do something and play with it uh, for your own story. Uh, if it's only a matter of pixel and centimeter and you can do that or not, um, you restrain. Everybody, you, you can have a frustration because it's a world you don't know. Mm. And you're used to manage uh, brilliantly uh, right. uh, for those uh, director um, uh, in 2D. Yeah. So for me, the most important things w were exactly before. Yeah. Prepare. And <laughs> yes. And it, it was the same, in fact, for the editing, okay. uh, because editor of, uh, also needed all, all of all of them, in fact. Okay. All of us. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe I can just, uh, so it was a few pictures from different shooting uh, with different material. As a stereographer, I'm always uh, using a transvideo <coughs> monitor for my, for my 3D adjustment. Um, and the, the origin of um, uh, Cassius World of Culture was if building could talk. So the, um, just after the second session <laughs> shooting of Pina in 2010, uh, Vim um, wanted to shoot uh, a video installation uh, talking about um, the Rolex Learning Center in Lausanne, in Switzerland. And this video installation was uh, in L'Arsenal during one month uh, during the Architectural Biennale mm. in 2010. 
pretty successful um, during the Biennale and pretty successful after on Architectural Festival and give birth after mm. of uh, the idea of Cathedral of Culture for TV and theater. Uh, that's the few extract of him. Um, just for you. As somebody who has learned a lot from painting and from photography, and who has seen a good deal of the history of cinema, I can only say that the screen, the two-dimensional screen, is something that I've completely absorbed in my entire system of thinking. I could say it's in my genes, but the screen, whether it's the canvas of the painter or the paper of the photography or the screen of the cinema, the two-dimensional representation is deep in my unconscious, it's in, in my genes. And to be able to break out of it and for the first time to reach through the skin screen and open it up is, of course, a huge thing. And it goes against everything I've learned so far. And that's why it's so exciting, because we are the process of unlearning or of learning a new tool of perception is a unique chance, really. I mean, how often was such a tool given to artist, craftsman, a tool that really changed the rules of the game so completely. Sometimes I think even when sound was introduced to cinema, it wasn't that big a event than the addition of the third dimension. Great. He, he seems so inspired by 3D work. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. Well, do you think he'll ever go back to 2D? Yeah, I'm oh, sure for, of that because he's always yeah. <laughs> has a lot of uh, big director. Mm. He's always developing ten projects mm. at the same time. He is mm. also, uh, of course, working in mm. 2D. Mm. Um, but he's, he's shooting or just finished shooting in Montreal. This film, Everything Will Be Fine, which yeah. is a drama, mm -hmm. and yeah. maybe you can talk a little bit about the 3D approach here because we haven't really seen sort of a straight drama in told in 3D yeah, this, and it, this era, anyway. Again, even if it's Vim, even if he's uh, working, we are uh, developing a lot of things since five years, uh, uh, still um, doing some tests, and um, uh, even uh, during the writing process mm. with Bjorn Olaf Turns and uh, a wonderful uh, script writer, uh, to test things and see if narratively something um, efficient and, mm. and really strong for his story because it's a drama. The main actor, uh, the, the main character is James Franco, played uh, play by, by James Franco, uh, Thomas, and it's happened a huge, huge uh, dramatic um, event at the beginning of the movie, and he needs to deal with that during mm. 12 years. Okay. This um, accident is, um, uh, of course, um, hurting all the character around this movie. It's, it's really a drama, a fully native uh, shot in 3D, of course, without any visual effect. Uh, it was to, to um, the 3D is there to get inside, uh, be close to the main mm. character, inside his emotion, uh, have uh, also from the environment, the external environment, uh, emotional le le landscape, uh, I would say. Okay. So how we can, uh, how the 3D can be uh, inside all this process and um, enhance uh, all this um, interiority and the way he see world after this accident. So we were um, testing a lot of things. Uh, Vim also said to me, okay, uh, I want that the 3D can follow the emotion of the character. Mm -hmm. After this accident, he's quite depressed and living sadly see life sadly so mm. how we can do that in 3d how we, we can play with that uh, through these 12 years uh, mm. story and sometimes have uh, some few moments really uh, what he said hyper realism so mm. suddenly the character see life 
beautifully mm. and how we can manage again that in, mm. in 3D. And so it was really interesting for me also mm. pushing my own limits. Mm. <laughs> and, um, and again, I think it's um, a teamwork. It's not only a matter of uh, 3D adjustment, mm. good or not. It's, it was, um, it's affecting also uh, the light the depth of field, uh, the way we can uh, shoot that uh, mm. inside the cutting um, mm. with the, um, all the set design mm. also. It, it was so important how we can have this impact mm. um, uh, following uh, really um, the, the main character. Mm. But uh, for me, it was not only the 3D. It was really interesting to, of course, again, to work with someone like Vim, mm. and it was, um, always question with the, uh, the rest of the team also. Mm. Um, and do you think it changed the way that S James Franco was working in that film? <coughs> Did the, does he have to think about things in a different way if he's being I shot in 3D? I think he already know because he, he did a movie before yeah. in 3D. And um, everything was, uh, every acting was um, a little less, a little sober. Okay because they are already with a huge presence. Mm. They are, we are, uh, as an audience, we are already in mm. something we propose on screen. So we need to not to cut this precious link mm. between the audience and the 3D. That's a, uh, th a real challenge yes. because yeah. it's so different uh, than in 2D uh, regarding movement, light, mm. um, cutting, editing, rhythm. On the other hand, uh, yeah, for um, for all the actors, um, they are there with a huge presence, and um, every little movement, close up, uh, give something. Yeah, you're right there. So strong. Yeah, yeah. so strong. So um, on set, you can say that James is uh, not overacting, of course, mm. but even just acting sometimes. It's like oh. Uh, is he playing or not? And after, of course, when you see uh, all the rushes, you say, mm. wow, mm. we don't need more. In fact, it's just there. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to see. So oh, yeah. In the <laughs> drama in 3D, I can't wait. Yeah. Um, I've got tons more questions, but I thought maybe the audience might have some as well. Does anybody have a question yet? Did you have something with which you could see the stereo on set, uh, like a post-production unit or something, on on this? On my PowerPoint? Uh -huh. No. No, no. I mean, what I meant. Did they edit it in two D or in three D? In three D. In three D, directly yeah. in three D. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on set, we have a side by side uh, television to to okay. to have a, a playback monitor, live and playback yeah. uh, for the summer session so we, we we shot five weeks for the summer session in canada this summer and we shot two weeks um for the winter block we we just done uh, three weeks ago um and we we have a um, four meter screen and i, I can for example uh, all uh, the rest of the team or uh, vim uh, uh, see the rushes every day after on a four meter screen on a special room. It was artist, not on set, it was on, a, um, on another room. Mm. Not for the winter session because it was really tight and, and not, so, not so easy to, to have it with us. And for the editing, uh, Tony is uh, the editor of Vim. He already did Pina. And in his room, there is uh, a 2D monitor and this four meter screen. Mm. Uh, um, passive mode not to be so tiring mm -hmm. and in the room. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I think it's, of course it's tiring. I, I am doing all the time 3D grading on, on big screen, active, passive. I know that it is sometimes tiring, but I really believe that it's not making sense. Uh, even if the editor is quite open to the 3D, uh, you still keep your way of doing something in 2D. Um, uh, I, I, I really, recommend mm. uh, to try to find something less tiring, of course, so maybe a passive mode, uh, because it's switching from one computer to the screen, it's tiring, yeah. But on the other hand, for me, I think we, we cut 
we, we are out of a possibility to create something um, <coughs> on the editing room, the editing process step so crucial if we are editing everything in 2D. Even if you are, uh, you want at the end of the week to check in 3D, your mind still in 2D. I really believe that. Mm. Good mm. advice. Um, can we go to the second row and then we'll go to the fourth row? Well, yeah. Hi, Josephine. I'm a stereographer as well, but I was interested in, you were talking about the natural depth method, but we never ended up talking about that. Mm. If you could uh, elaborate on a little bit on that. Yeah, uh, the natural depth method was developed by my, by, uh, my father, Alain de Hope. Um, he used to, um, he passed away two years ago, uh, he used to be um, director um, of photography. Uh, 40 years and after specialized uh, in a specific format and mainly um, 3D uh, during 20 years and he started to understand okay we have a flat screen uh, we need glasses to see 3D um, there is some visual limits we need to take care about just for the non-sexy but healthy sanitary um, part of our job as a stereographer, not to hurt people, audience um, eyes. Otherwise, they will not pay again to see another 3D content. It's just uh, the, the minimum we can give. And he was also um, try to understand all the time with researcher and scientists how our visual perception, how it works, because we are cheating the brain. We are offering an optical illusion. So we just, as a stereographer, uh, just need to understand the minimum um, how it works. And for example, how huge is, it, is, is this impact uh, for the creative part uh, regarding uh, <coughs> the, the environment and the character? If you don't understand that, if it's sharp, you can see 3D. If it's not sharp, you can't see 3D. I am not saying we we don't need to use the, the depth of field. Of course, I think when you need to go to someone, an intimacy moment, you need at this moment not to be sharp everywhere. Otherwise, your eyes can go in everywhere in this, uh, what we call the scenic box. So all this 3D environment uh, out of coming uh, uh, space, screen plane, and, and, and uh, far background space. We need to manage that because you are in front of a scenic box. So as a, for a director, you are also a stage designer. But it's huge. Yes, you have the, the presence of a uh, character of objects. You have the volume. You have the depth. Uh, you can travel inside that. Uh, but it's, it's, yeah, it's normal that uh, the 2D grammar is not exactly the same in 3D uh, because we are inside this huge scenic box, one shot after the other, generating something something else. So we need to, to think about that. And um, sometimes people said to me, oh, uh, I learn with a natural depth method, but you know, um, I want to push that and that. And of course, everybody needs to push uh, a method and uh, enhance the value and uh, um, sh um, project after project, you can have more experience and, and push uh, the limit and see how it works. Uh, on the other hand, I am really happy to, uh, to have this wonderful opportunity to work with him during, uh, for yeah, nine years because he opened my eyes just to say, okay, it's, it's, if it is only a method, a good way of doing 3D adjustment, it's already huge sometimes, but absolutely not enough. What is the sense of that? Are you serving a uh, narrative purpose? Are you serving an artistic content, something? Otherwise, I think it's, yeah, it's partly useless. Uh, you gave you an understanding of the parameters, so then after that you can play with them too. So you yeah, a, a, a global vision of, um, if you are not <laughs> taking care of what you could uh, um, propose uh, for the creative pre-production preparation uh, until the end. There is so many steps uh, during the process. You, you will lose the, sometimes the good 3D, and, but also, uh, OK, all what the 3D can give to, to the director. So. Is this a method that people can learn about? Is there a book or a website? or? 
How do people yeah, learn yeah, yeah. about it? Uh, yeah, there is a few, so it's really the first step, but okay. there, is, there is some information with the trans video booklet. So uh, um, he, he, was, uh, he was working on a book before okay. dying, so I promised to finish it. I need okay. <laughs> You've been busy, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, need to be <laughs> I need to finish it, of course. And I think it's, um, for example, I'm working um, actually on, um, uh, with the film Crossional Lab, it's helping to launch a film author independent budget. Uh, but from the beginning, from the writing process. Yes. And, and all the lecture, all the people involved are scientists, 3D uh, filmmaker, uh, researcher, philosoph, uh, audio, picture. Like just open the perspective mm. because um, 3D is a medium. Mm. And we, need, we are really at the first step. And we just need to see something more than uh, pixels or uh, do I need to change my rhythm editing or mm. not? Uh, no, no, it's not for uh, changing anything mm. from 2D to 3D. Uh, I think it's not uh, not the question. Yeah. We have a medium and we need to explore. And everybody needs to work on it. Yeah, you but it's just fitting. Add in a stereographer. It, it's yeah. really, yeah, it's really yeah. fitting. Yeah. Uh, and I think when a painter is most of the time uh, doing some stuff with a pen, if he starts with oil uh, painting, mm. he will just uh, learn and play and discover mm. and maybe at the end he will mix both yeah. both medium but yeah. uh, the first step is to get in yeah try it out yeah uh, I think we have time for one more question and there was uh, that gentleman in the red shirt on the fourth row uh, a lot of the buildings you were shooting were quite rectangular in nature and with the wide angle the lenses that you use for 3D you would have had some distortions, yeah? So did you use any kind of perspective correction in post to try and correct for the lens distortions that, were, that would have been there? No. No? No, uh, one, of the, one of the main um, I mean, I only really ask, because having, having shot buildings myself, I find myself looking afterwards and thinking, oh, God, you know, and I fix it. Make things look more. You know, some more but we try. Uh, we try not to have so much distortion when we choose the lenses. And one of the main things we use with the natural depth method is uh, to have what we can call normal lens. And if you decide uh, to do something, is not changing so much lens, but doing with the camera. So coming closer to someone is really not the same effect inside an editing. So when you say normal lens, you mean like 50 mil? Uh, with a 35 millimeter uh, sensor, so for example, the Alexa, it's the 24 millimeter. So it's um, 54 degrees angle, and we, for Pina, um, for everything will be fine. All cathedral of culture, uh, Pina was made with uh, mainly the 10 millimeter and two third sensor, so it's this. Uh, let's say uh, 50 or f uh, fif um, 54 uh, degrees. Um, it was the same for everything will be fine. Even we have stars and, and, and drama and uh, uh, we were using uh, most of the time the 28 and the 32, sometimes the 40, maybe one or two times a 50 and, and sometimes the 18 and the 20, but it was uh, mainly the 28 and the 30, and it was the same uh, for uh, Cathedral of Culture. And of course, we need to take care about distortion. When you are showing architecture, I really agree that it's better not to have a distortion uh, on the, the picture in the building, but uh, um, we, we try to find a solution with uh, fixed lens. Uh, pretty good uh, quality and and be have the same material for every project. It's not so easy to shot uh, every every documentary like that. So um, yeah, we were mainly in between 20 millimeter and and the 32 or the 40 sometimes. Okay, I think we're out of time. So I just wanted to ask you to end. What's your hope for the the future of of 3D? Oh, that's a big one. But. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I'm. I'm really. I'm really happy when I see. Uh, when I see a young director, author, independent, uh, 
getting inside the 3D and, and try to propose something uh, already with the 3D inside mm. uh, the tools. Uh, of the director and I am also really happy when I saw uh, a movie like Gravity so it's big movie big budget it's something uh, <laughs> not so easy to say uh, for me because it's not native uh, natively shooting but it's so well made because you have a a director who think uh, how he catch the 3D and say something, live an experience, get inside mm. uh, Sandra Bullock character and take your hand and, uh, and not leave you until the end of the movie. And I'm pretty sure that he worked hardly with uh, Chris Park hmm. before, uh, during the set yeah. and during the shooting and after. Mm. And we can feel that uh, with the editing and the sound editing also. It's a wow, it's a, f it's a full mm. experience. And he, he is a director who said, OK, oh, with 3D I can have that, 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 that. OK, let's play, let's mm. do it. So it's, it's wonderful to see that on a big production, and it's um, wonderful to see that uh, smaller and independent mm. wants to get in and, and propose, uh, use the 3D, really. OK, great. Congrats <laughs> on Cathedrals of Culture. It looks Thanks. amazing. So thank Josephine.